In this series, we're going to discuss the amazing forecasting tools within Excel. Namely, we're going to discuss Goal Seek, Scenario Manager, and the forecasting options as well. Now, the forecasting option is a very specific thing called forecasting. So if we look at this data here, we're going to see that we have this pet supply sales quarterly data going from 2015 all the way down here to 2024. And we'd like to forecast our data into the future. So normally, we'd have to use some very complicated formula to be able to do that. But with the forecasting tool, not only is it going to create and apply that formula, but it's also going to create a chart for us to be able to see it visually what that forecasting is going to look like. So let's go ahead and see. So first thing I want you to see here is under the data tab, you're going to see on the far right hand side, we have this group called forecast and we have this tab here called forecast sheet. So the first thing we want to do is just highlight all of our data. So you'll notice here I have reporting date and sales. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight everything just like that. Very simply, all I do is click on forecast sheet. When I do that, almost immediately you're going to see some pretty amazing results. Now you're going to notice here is date over date. And then you're going to see that I have the forecast after all of the actual data that I can see here. So this orange part is where the forecast begins. And this is where my actual real data ends. Now on the upper right hand side, you're going to see that we have two different choices for the types of charts we can do. We have the line chart and we also have this column chart. So really depending on your preference, you can switch back and forth between these. Now later on, if you decide you can change it again, just using the basic chart tools. So let's go ahead and just stick with this initial line chart option. Now you'll see that on the bottom, I have this option that says forecast end. When do you want your forecast to end? So where the orange line ends, that's where we're forecasting until. So how far do you want to go out with your forecast? And that's pretty good. That's going to give me a good idea of where my data might be in a few years. Now let's go ahead and click on this little options over here in the lower left. Now you'll also see this section here where we say forecast start. That's essentially where the orange begins. Now there's a little trick that I like to employ that maybe you don't want it to end or start right where your data ends because there's something called the confidence interval that you may want to see how well the data is actually doing compared to something you actually know. So one little trick is you may want to bring this back a couple of months or maybe even a couple of quarters to see what it looks like, how the forecasting works compared to your own reality. So that's where your confidence interval comes in. And that's why we have these two lines up and above. You can see confidence interval on the higher end, confidence interval on the lower end, and then you can see there's something right there in the middle. So of course you can make that a little bit wider on both sides if you like. So if I want to change this, I can very simply now bring this down to let's just say April, and I'll say April 1st, and we'll see how it now comes across like this. And you'll notice how the upper end of the confidence interval might be a little bit more accurate. So that's actually telling us something about how the next bit of data is going to come in. That's pretty neat. So I'm going to keep it just like that. And then you'll also see you can detect for seasonality because maybe the sales you're having goes up and down depending on the season. And you can see here we have four seasons. We're going to keep it just like that. And then all the rest of this, I'm going to keep it as average and all the rest interpolation because that's going to be fine for me. Now I'm going to click on create and you'll see just like that now I have this new chart that now appears. And you'll see that there's also a new sheet that appears called sheet one. My original data is still here called forecasting. And then here is sheet one with all my original data here, my chart. And then if we scroll down a little bit, you're going to see this is where my next set of data is being forecasted. And you'll see here is the 2024 data. And then on the right hand side, I have my different intervals and as well as the forecasting in the middle. Now, if you click on any of these, for example, you will see that this formula pops up. And this is the formula that I referred to earlier that we don't have to worry about, but this is how it's getting its forecasting data. Pretty neat. So now let's go ahead and click on our chart and we get a nice bigger version of it. And we'll be able to see exactly all our original data and then what it's going to forecast. And right off the bat, you might be complete with this and feel like this is something that worth presenting and reporting on. But now earlier we talked about the fact that you can forecast showing it in different ways. So if I go back over here to my ribbon and I choose chart design, you'll notice that I can change the chart type from my line chart to let's say for a column chart. I click on that and you're going to see a nice little view there. And then maybe even want to do it in 3D 
that could be pretty neat. Pretty cool right there. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with my line chart, but if I'd like to, I could even put in some of these little markers there. That might be easier to read for some of your viewers. And then very simply, I'm gonna click OK. Now, if you wanted to change the color of any of these, you absolutely can. So maybe you wanted to change the color of these guys right here on your main actual numbers. You can go over here to Format, and then I'm gonna choose from my Shape Outline. Let's go ahead and make that green. And now if I click away, you'll be able to see that that's green. Now, everything else you might want to change on your chart is now available to you. If you go to your chart design, and then notice there's all kinds of elements you can add on to this. You can select the data and once again, change the chart type and also move the data to its own tab. Now, just like any other chart, if I wanted to, I can copy this. I can put this into a presentation. So much you can do. Now, let's go ahead and talk about a different forecasting tool called the Goal Seek. Now I'm gonna click over here to Goal Seek, and we're gonna look at some data here that we have. And just notice on the right-hand side, I have this little cheat sheet that we're gonna to refer to in just a little bit. But let's just break down what the Goal Seek is. Well, if you own a business or if you have some type of goal, you wanna be able to seek out how you get to that goal by saying, hey, how much do I have to sell in order to make a million dollars? How many units do I have to process in order to make it to my goal of 20 million. Okay, so if we look at this very, very simple laid out data here, you'll see how my profit already has a formula in it, and that formula consists of all of these other variables here. So if we look at here, we have the quantity, unit price, unit cost, and the fixed cost. These are all factors that go into my total profit because I need to know how much it's gonna cost that I'm selling it for, how much am I paying for it, and also I have some fixed costs like overhead, et cetera, and that all factors into this. But the one remaining variable that I do not know about is how many of these little widgets do I have to sell in order to get to this amount. Now my profit that I'm looking for is gonna be, let's just say, $500,000. So that's where the goal seat comes in. I don't know how much, in other words, how many of these widgets I need to sell in order to get to this, okay? But I do have this formula that's gonna factor in all of these things once I decide what that particular profit is going to be. So let's go ahead and see it in action. So I'll go back over to here to data, and I'm gonna go over here to this what if analysis, because this is the what if. What if I wanted to make half a million dollars? What if I wanted to make $20 million? How many of these things do I need to sell? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on what if. I'm gonna choose goal seek. And you're gonna see this same exact dialog box now appears over here. So what are we talking about here? Well, the first part is what cell do you want to set as your goal? Well, for me, I wanna set C8 as my goal. And what is my value? My value is going to be 500,000. What is my goal? So I'm gonna go ahead and type that in. Great. Pretty easy. And then here is the variable. Here's the thing that I do not know that's gonna feed into all of these, essentially by changing what cell, and it's going to be this. And again, I don't know how many of these widgets I have to sell in order to get to my 500,000. So now, as soon as I click OK, just keep your eye on this number. You can see, boom, now I know I can tell my team, hey everybody, we have to sell 330,500 widgets in order to achieve our goal of 500,000. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Now, if any of these other numbers change, let's say for example, our unit price now goes to 250, you're gonna see how everything else changes, okay? Because it's all still connected to this same original formula. So very simple, but very elegant and very powerful. Now, let's say you had another situation where you wanted to look at multiple scenarios. That's where the scenario manager comes in. Because in this case, it's just essentially one simple thing. Let's go in and look at something that's gonna be a little bit more complex. So I'm gonna break down for you one that's already complete so we can have a good understanding of what the scenario manager can do for us. And then we're gonna go ahead and create a few scenarios on our own. So I'll come over to here to the scenario manager complete. Well, let's take a look at this. Let's imagine you're either a realtor or you're the one buying a house and you just need to look at a few different scenarios in terms of how much your purchase price is, how much the taxes are gonna cost, your down payment, your interest rate, could be any factor. And you wanted to know, well, we could maybe have this amount down that we have in our back pocket. Maybe the interest rates are gonna fluctuate. Maybe we wanna do a different turn mortgage. Could be any variety of different things. Maybe your house you can decide to get is gonna be a little bit more or less. 
and we want to know multiple scenarios and how much ultimately cash do we need to close and how much is going to be our monthly expense. Okay, so let's go ahead and break this down for us by looking kind of under the hood as to what the scenarios are. So if I go back to my what if analysis, I'm going to go over here to scenario manager. We're going to see that we have four different scenarios where we have 20% down payment and we have 4% interest and we have a 30 year term length for our mortgage, et cetera. And we have all of these here. But I'm going to go ahead and get into this so we can see how the formula is actually going in here with its calculations. So I click on edit and you can see here's the name of it. And then you'll notice here it says changing cells. Which cells are gonna be my variables? Well, earlier we talked about the 20%, which is for the down payment, 4%, which is for the interest, and then 30 is for the term length. Now, if I click on OK now, you're gonna see this is where the numbers come in, 20%, 4%, and the 30 right there. And these are the real numbers that's doing the calculation. That's beautiful. So now when I click OK, I come back to this. So let's go ahead and just take a look at it when we see the different scenarios. So very simply now, I'm gonna click on show, watch everything change, look at that. I'll do this one again. Click on show, watch everything change accordingly. For the next two, I'm just gonna simply double click and you can see it does the same exact thing. Beautiful. So these are calculations that I could definitely have not done very easily in a very simple and elegant way. Now in a little bit, we're also gonna talk about how we can summarize these all in one place. But let's just go ahead and see how we can do this from the ground up. Now I'm gonna click on close and I'm gonna go over to here to our lesson. Now some things I want you to notice is over here in the upper left, I have these things called named ranges, which is gonna be very important for us when we in fact do that summary. You can see here interest rate is our name range here term length, et cetera. You can see this one just says H3. So I'm gonna override that with my own named range. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call this purchase price. Hit enter and notice with name ranges, there are no spaces, so I had to put underscores there. And then some of these other ones, let's go ahead and see it without the named ranges so you can see what it's gonna look like when we do the summary and not quite as elegant. So I definitely encourage you when you are working with a scenario manager to apply named ranges for them but you'll see that pretty much all of these have them except for these bottom ones. And again, you're gonna see the difference as to why we do that. So let's go ahead now and we're going to do a scenario manager for a few different scenarios with different interests, different down payment and different term length. Okay, so you can see I have all these all locked and loaded, ready to go. And I've also given you some step-by-step -step on how to do this on your own, but let's try it. What if analysis, scenario manager. And currently we have no scenarios. So what we have to do is just very simply add a scenario, click on add, and I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a name. And this could be anything you want. So I'm just gonna make this 25% interest rate of let's say six and a half percent, and then a term length of 30. And again, these have nothing to do with the actual formula. And you can see here is changing cells. If you didn't highlight them the first time, don't worry about it. You can go and highlight them right now. Click inside here, highlight them. And then if you wanna put a comment in there, you can do that as well. And maybe I'll just copy and paste this and then put these in there. And I'll just type in something else here. Okay, and then maybe even more details. And I won't do that for all of them, but I just want you to see the fact that you can do it. So now that is gonna be my first scenario that I'm going to create. I click okay. And now this is where I have to put in the actual numbers. This is very important that we put in the real numbers here. So let's go ahead and make this exactly reflecting what I put in earlier. Beautiful. I'm going to click OK. And now I have one scenario down. So let's go ahead and do one more. I'll do this one on my own. You can watch me. And then I'm going to want you to pause it. And then maybe you do a total of four. So the next one I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a 15% at 7% and still again at 30 so go ahead and do add. And let's go ahead and type all that in. And once again, changing my cells right there. And I'm just going to remove all these right here. And then 15, 7, and 30. So now let's come over to here, type these out. Love it. Click OK. And now I'm pretty much good to go. And again, I want you to practice this before you start implementing everything, but just know what we can do here. So let's just watch it change. Let's go ahead and take a look. Our purchase price we know is gonna be 625,000. 
And then here is our tax rate, all that good stuff here. And now we'll go ahead and just click on show. And now you're gonna see how everything changes because my purchase price is still gonna be the same, but then all of these might change. So therefore, how much cash I need to close is also gonna change. Let's go ahead and double click on this one. Notice how my cash to close changes here. And then my monthly expenses also change because guess what? Now I'm gonna have a lower down payment higher interest rate, et cetera. So therefore this goes up, but this goes down. Beautiful, okay? Totally makes sense. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's go and I'm gonna close this and let's just see what happens now if I decide, you know what? Maybe I can afford a more expensive house. So let's go ahead and bring this up to 700,000. I hit enter. And now notice how everything still changes. So we could still use all of these different scenarios that we're looking at here, but now based off of the purchase price. So I'll come back over to here to my scenario manager and I'll just go and double click and double click and just go back and forth between all of these. So very, very slick, nice little dashboard to get quick and easy access to all of your content. Now let's go ahead and see what the summary looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and choose summary now. And essentially what we're gonna be doing is summarizing all the different content we wanna see in one place. So what do I wanna see here? Well, I want all this content I want all this content, so I'm just holding down the control key. I want all this content, and definitely this and this. Okay, so holding down the control key to get all these non-contiguous cells. I'm gonna very simply click OK. And now you're gonna see beautifully, it now creates a new tab for my scenario summary, and it breaks it down for me with all of these individual different scenarios here. So let's go ahead, and I've only done two. Hopefully you did more than that. You'll be able to see, this is what the current value was before I did anything. And these are the different scenarios that I can now apply accordingly. Beautiful. And now you'll also notice, here's where all my name ranges really came into play. Percent down, interest rate, term length. There's that purchase price I did at the end. And then, uh-oh, here are the ones that I didn't do as named ranges, right? So that could potentially be a problem, just really not as elegant. But you can see here why we want to do that. Beautiful. So let's go back to our original data. Let's go ahead and take a look at one more. I'll go back to my scenario manager. And this time we're gonna see, if I choose summary, I also have the option to do a pivot table if I want to. So now it's gonna have all that same data in there. I click okay. And now from here, I can actually pick and choose which data I want to be in my pivot table. So this is way too much data, and maybe I actually want it in a variety of different places here to be able to really control what I'm going to see and how I want to see it. So it's really going to be up to you, and this is certainly another lesson on pivot tables, but you can put it in rows and columns, maybe certain filters you see, and absolutely certain values you want to see more than others. So for as an example, I'll go ahead and just remove H4, and then I'll also remove the term length, and just notice how this is changing here. And then of course I can always remove them from up here and just watch how it's going to go accordingly. So you then you'll eventually get to where you wanna be as you pick and choose all these. Very much a spice to taste, but you can see how valuable it is looking at my two different scenarios and then you can see it side by side. And of course all of these things could be formatted, put this into a percentage, put these into dollars, etc. So very, very powerful and a very efficient tool to ultimately help with all of your forecasting needs without doing any complicated formula because Excel does all the heavy lifting so you don't have to. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.